ADC crisis dipens as interim leadership dismisses expulsion of presidential candidate. And Labour Party now hot cake as politicians hustle for its ticket. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anacom. Members of the African Democratic Congress, ADC, who identified themselves as in the interim leadership of the party, have dismissed the expulsion of Dumebi Kachiku. Ralph Mosu, the national chairman of the ADC, had announced the expulsion of Kachiku, ADC presidential candidate, and, and other party chieftains over alleged anti-party activities. Earlier in September, the presidential candidate was suspended after he supported the call of, for the party's chieftains who asked Mosu to resign after 17 years in office. In an interview, the interim leadership said Ngosu is the former chairman whose tenure has elapsed and all expulsions and suspensions from him are merely diversionary and a face-saving measure. Well, joining us to discuss this in depth is Ahmed Bahari. He's the vice presidential candidate of the ADC and Michael Achimogu, who's a media consultant. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Great. Um, I'm going to start with you, of course, Ahmed, because you're the vice presidential candidate of the ADC. Um, there have been so many conflicting statements about what's going on in the party. Uh, I tried to speak with um, Mr. Ralph Mosu. Um, uh, unfortunately, I was unable to get him to uh, be here to talk about this issue. But paint us a picture of what exactly is going on in the ADC. And this is just a few days before the campaign starts in earnest. Uh, exactly. Thank you, Mary. Uh, a few days ago, about the 21st of August 2022, the tenure of the National Working Committee lapsed. Uh, before then, um, he had uh, forcefully, undemocratically, unconstitutionally removed the state. That angered other colleagues of that state chairman, and they all came down to Abuja, and they had the that their colleague be reinstated with immediate effect, and that they are looking forward to the... Um, to the planned National Elective Convention since the National Working Committee's tenure elapses in a few days. And this, they quickly put together a kangaroo neck meeting announcing their own tenure allegation by one year. So that means they would have to go through the election cycle. And when this matter started creating um, unnecessary the the, the, the president of the party, the, pre, the presidential candidate of the party, decided to wade in. And when he heard both sides, he said to everybody that, in all honesty, your tenure has ex expired. Uh, whatever you did on the 25th of August, futility, because at that time you were no After 17 years as a national chairman, uh, which is also unconstitutional, Oh, Ahmed, no. I, think, I think we're having no. a problem with you. We're losing half of what you're saying. I don't know if it's your connection, but it's very difficult for us to make out all the things that you're saying. So we'll try again. I don't know what this is, but let's try again. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm just saying that basically, um, Chairman, you know, undemocratically removed the state chairman of Abia State. chairman who came to Abuja and they resolved that their colleague be reinstated. In that oh, so I'm, in, I'm, in, that I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to cut in. We're going to have to take you out and bring you back in because we're not hearing half of what you're saying so that we can get the gist of this matter. But while we're trying to do that, um, I'll toss to you, Michael. Uh, Michael, you used to work for somebody within the party um, some time ago, just before the presidential primaries of the ADC. 
Uh, and, and I think I, you and I have spoken about some things that transpired during the primaries, but if what the vice presidential candidate is, anything to go, uh, is saying is anything to go by, he's talked about the fact that the tenor of the chairman of the party had elapsed and, and that everything that he's done uh, seems to be an exercise in futility. Uh, but if that tenor has expi had expired, as he said, how come um, an interim leadership or some form of by-election or you know, Congress wasn't held so that they would have another leadership in place to avoid this drama that's playing out? Yeah, um, thank you, um, Mary, uh, uh, to be honest. You see, I've never been a party man in the traditional sense of it. So um, I, I would not um, present myself as though I, I, I knew everything that's going to happen, you know, um, per the rules of the party. But I also know that for participations like this, there should be internal conflict resolution uh, mechanisms that should be able to take care of these situations. First of all, I do not know if it's the place of the presidential candidate to be sacking chairman of parties um, uh, on, on which platform is running. You know, but both the chairman and the candidate have handled these things um, in a way that does not encourage um, people of, uh, with integrity next time, you know, to want to play small party politics. Because everything the chairman himself has said between June and now has further indicted him, you know, uh, proven his inefficiency, especially. Uh, 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 and it also vindicated most of us who, who kicked against the, the activities, the events in Abiyokuta back in June. Um, if there's a presidential election coming up, you know, and the party says, you know, uh, it's going to be a distraction for us to do this now. I don't know if it's the, the candidate himself that has the powers to come out and say, I've sacked the chairman, you know, and I'm installing an interim uh, body, you know. But uh, it's, it's their party thing. We, we, we are here to observe. Let's talk about um, the criticisms uh, of, you know, the party chairman. Now, uh, one would think that as this crisis is rocking the party, INEC would step in, but it seems like INEC uh, is somewhat silent. And as we all, as we gather, Mr. Mosu has been the party's chairman for over 17 years. This is what we gather. And now the National Executive uh, Committee of the party had recently constituted an eight-man Ketika committee to pilot the affairs of the party uh, following the expiration off Mosu's executive. Now, that board that is sitting right now is the one that's taking all of these so-called, you know, um, decisions. Because you're you're querying the fact that a part, the chair, uh, the presidential candidate is the Mr. one Khan? who seems to be sacking. But I don't. I, I'm I'm giving you information reportedly that this is these decisions were made by an eight-man committee. So just to correct you there, Michael. Okay, you know, you froze for a moment. The screen froze, so I, I didn't hear most of what you said. So I'm trying to say that you were asking why the presidential candidate of the party should be the one sacking, you know, the party chairman uh, and, of course, some members. And I'm saying that there was an eight-man committee um, that was put together um, by the National Executive Committee of the party to look into this issue. And they were supposed to, to hold brief uh, while Mosu has stepped away. So again, I don't think it's the presidential candidate that's running uh, the show, except you know something that we don't. Uh, well, the presidential candidate was the one who um, broadcast the message that I watched. He was the one who made the announcement that I saw. I didn't see the committee making uh, that announcement, uh, but I stand to be corrected. However, I agree um, that it is undemocratic for any party chairman to be on that seat for 17 years. I don't even think that it agrees to the INEC regulations, and I do not know why this has been allowed to stand, you know. Um, but like I said, we are watching. That aspect of their party doesn't really um, bother me, you know. Uh, we have always stated since June that everything about uh, ADC as a political party is wrong, you know, and I'm glad that at this point in time, 
both the, the, the party leadership and their candidates have proven us right. I don't know if we have Ahmed back. Ahmed, are you back? I've been hearing everything that has been ah, said. Great. Uh, and I was to be sure that you're, um, you know, you, you're back and we can hear you clearly. Now, you heard some of the things that Michael said. Um, would you like to, you know, react to that before I ask my next question? Yeah, I'm happy that you corrected Michael. Um, the presidential candidate was responsible for the removal of the National Working Committee chairman. Okay. I think it's important that for parties and big parties alike what do is to read the constitution of that party understand understand what the legalities are behind we're still having issues oh, we're still having issues with your audio um ahmed i do not know if you're using an earpiece or something but we're unable to hear you and um, it's affecting the conversation. So we're unable to hear what you're saying in, in its entirety. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, but then some of your words are lost. Okay. Um, I am saying that the... I'm so sorry. Um, I'm so sorry. Ahmed, we can't hear you. So I'm going to toss back to Michael while we try to fix your audio. Michael, let's talk more now about the future of the ADC because this is where the conversation is going. Like I said, it's a few weeks to the campaign kickoff proper. All political parties are strategizing and re-strategizing to deal with what the campaign season will throw at them. But here is the ADC, um, you know, uh, embroiled in this crisis. What is the future? What does the future hold from an outsider looking in? I think it's safe to conclude that there will be no presidential election for the ADC. First, the chairman of the party has announced the conversation. The conversation. Can you hear me? Yeah, Ahmed, we can hear you. Hello? But Michael was speaking. Yeah. Yeah, okay, sorry. I was trying to call one of your staff. If you cannot get me on this platform, we can do a phone conversation. Okay. Who was supporting another candidate who lost, uh, another aspirant who lost at the prime. Ahmed, I'm so sorry. I think we're going to have to take you off totally, all right, so that we can just concentrate on Michael and then get you back on another platform, all right? Michael, you can continue, please. First of all, I don't know why people have always misconstrued this. I, I have never spoken out against the Navy as a person, as a politician, because, you know, he's a politician who came into the party and was willing to do whatever it took to get a ticket. All the candidates, all the aspirants on the platform of the party at the time would have taken advantage of any situation that would give them, you know, the victory. We have no problems with the Navy. Our problem has always been with the party because the party provided the system by, by which everything turned out this way. But that said, the chairman of the party has expelled, the party has expelled their own presidential candidates. And then the chairman himself made two very critical statements. And I'll remind you, a couple of weeks ago, he, he put out a tweet insinuating that his own presidential candidate was a fraud star. That tweet, I think, it still stands there today. He even refer, uh, referred people to Google to maybe his name, you know. And um, just yesterday or the day before yesterday, he also announced that he may be still a member of the PDP. Now, this is him giving excuses or reasons why, you know, this expulsion is necessary. But now, the, the issue for me is not to maybe, it is this. Does the party not carry out due diligence before allowing people to run on their platform? This is the big question. Because the, the, the information on Google that the chairman is asking people to go back to, to prove the unsuitability of his own candidate for presidency, you know, that information had been there before the primaries. When do maybe join the party two months before the primaries, why did the party not carry out due diligence? And when every other candidate cried foul after the primaries, pointing to obvious irregularities, why was the chairman, this same chairman was defending both to maybe and, and himself? So to come out today and tell the world that my candidate is a fraudster, is a member of PDP, 
it's a pointer to his own failure. It indicts the chairman, not the candidate. But you but, know, but, so but, I do not but we also we, we also had a representative of um, the 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 presidential candidate of the ADC, and over and over again he made excuses. He well, he said that that tweet. In fact, I think um, it was the chairman of the ADC in Lagos State who said they cannot verify that tweet that it actually came from um, Chief Mosu. They, they also said that it could have been anybody, but that they, they respected that the position of the chairman uh, of the party and they did not think that he would in any way go to that extent. So again, you're saying that that tweet stands, but the party men are saying that that, that tweet cannot be verified and they're not certain that it came from him. But now, what, let's look at the issue where he's accusing the presidential candidate on his platform of being a member of the People's Democratic Party. It brings back to the question where you're saying, um, where's the vetting? Who vetted these people? But unfortunately, no. this man's name has been given to INEX. So where do we even start from? It seems like the party is split into two. There are those who are in support of the chairman and there are those who are in support of, you know, um, Dumebi Kachiku. What happens now? Because that's what everybody's wondering. And for those who are ardent followers of the ADC, where do they go from here? Well, I feel sad for genuine um, followers uh, and members of the party, especially those contesting on their down ballot, because at this point they are stuck. Where the party should have been making available logistics and other uh, promotional materials for, for their campaigns and try to win an election, they have been embroiled in this saga. Um, I don't see it ending well. I do not know really INEX rule. Um, I don't know if Dumebi can still, uh, uh, you know, will still appear on the ballot following his expulsion because I know that party is supreme in Nigeria and it's party people are voting for. So if the party is coming out to say this candidate is no longer um, in our party, I, I, I don't know, I don't see how he's going to, to be on the ballot. Um, Again, a, 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 member of the, a member of the National Working Committee, um, Akwashi, if I, if I got that name correctly, um, has come out to say that that particular expulsion is null and void, and it's a mere distraction. So again, I do not think that INEC does necessarily have a problem here, because there are people from the National Working Committee of the party who says this expulsion doesn't you know, hold any water, so sh we shouldn't be worried, should we? Because, I mean, they're, they're coming out here to say, what the chairman put out is not necessarily the truth. So these are members of the National Working Committee, people who should be working with the chairman, who have said that he's been expelled. So INEC shouldn't have a problem here. Well, um, this is open to INEC's interpretation. So I guess we have to wait to hear from INEC. You know, I'm not an authority in, that, in this particular, uh, especially in legal issues. But like you rightly said, you know, the party is divided now. There are factions, you know. There are people supporting, taking sides with the chairman and people taking sides with maybe um, Kachiku. So it remains to be seen what INEC um, um, does in this regard. However, it, however way it goes, whatever INEC decides, even if maybe were to be appear on the ballot, the point here is that he has not shown any sign that he's contesting running for this election like the chairman said there's there have been no consultations you know no no uh, 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 movement on his part to prove that you know he's he wants to um, sincerely campaign for 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 this thing recently um, just yesterday here yeah, someone told me in house that you know his you campaign know duty has also left within him. the party michael you're, you're, you're saying that the, party, the party's candidate has not made any movement or um, shown no, any... I'm saying the chairman of the party said that. Well, yes, but then you're not a member of the party. And like I said, the members of the National Working Committee have dismissed every single thing that the national chairman has actually said. So if we were to go by what the party is, is saying... How do you know that there are not movements within the party but, but, but plans maybe some things that are, looking ahead some things to, to the campaigns in itself? Mary, some things are tangible and can be seen. For instance, you see the candidate from Labour Party, from PDP, and from APC, and even that of the NNPP. You can see they've been going around, traveling all over the country, and, and you know, consulting uh, supporters and trying to woo people over. We haven't seen, maybe if, if this was happening, we we'll, would we'll see it. It's, it's not something that any uh, is not open for uh, second guessing so the chairman has said this and we have seen it 
this doesn't mean I'm taking sides with the chairman. I'm, I'm, I'm a neutral observer here. You know, if, if anything, I have, I have spoken up against the chairman and I put the blame for everything that's happening in the ADC at his, uh, you know, the, the book stops at his table, you know. But I'm saying we haven't seen Dumebi as we have seen other presidential candidates from other parties. The only times we have seen Dumebi on air has been to fight with either, you know, his party chairman or with my former principal. I don't see that as um, contesting for elections. All right, we have Ahmed back on the line. Ahmed, um, apologies for the connection issues. Now, uh, a lot to be said. If your party chairman has been chairman for over 17 years and nobody has questioned this, then all of a sudden, a few weeks to election day, um, the party now says, oh, his tenor has conveniently elapsed. Should this not call to question, of course, the integrity of the mem members of your political party at the highest echelon? Secondly, and there are also allegations from your party chairman that there are no movements, no plans whatsoever, um, you know, to campaign for this office. Again, buttressing his points that your candidate is not necessarily a member of this party, but a mole from the PDP. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Uh, thank you very much. Um, unfortunately, we are having an I think it's important for your other guests who you to work for one of the aspirants that lost at the primary to understand that this is politics and emotions and sentiments must always be placed at the back. Um, like I said to you from the beginning, there was a situation where the former national chairman removed the Abia state chairman. This is what caused other state chairmen to now request for the immediate return of their colleague, who is the other state chairman. When all of this was going on, they now also reminded the National Working Committee at that time that your tenure has elapsed. We should start working towards an elected national convention. When this resolution was presented before the former national chairman, he hurriedly put together a kangaroo neck meeting. And at that meeting, he announced himself and other national working committee members present that their tenure has been elongated by one year. Now, this is not cited in the constitution. And so that is why I started also by saying it's important for everybody to understand what kind of social contracts you are getting into when joining a political party or any association of that matter. At that point in time, people like myself, the presidential candidate in the party, had to now decide to intimate ourselves more with the constitution of the party. At that point, we now realize that the party has had rough rules to the former national chairman as the National chairman for 17 years. This is contrary to the constitution as it stands. So at that point, now became a situation where the presidential candidate had to take a position. Do I stand with the state chairman who wants the removal of Ralph Woods because he had tampered on their colleagues? Or do we stand with the national chairman who has been here on grounds of illegality? And at that point in time, the resolve became that, according to the Mavika, I am going to stand with the constitution of the party. And let me tell you something that happened in Abel Kuta very clearly. In Abel Kuta, when King Somogali was speaking English on TV, there were other contestants that were actually doing what they call grassroots politics, meeting with the people that really matter and that to vote during the primary. This is a political matter. It's a political exercise. You have to involve politics. Anything that you're speaking that is English, is English. What is paramount is how are you connecting with the structure that holds the party together? And when you lose at, a, at an exercise, it is expected that you will lose honorably and be a good sportsman. Not to go around and slander the process that just yesterday, you said was fine. So these are the things that I want us to understand very clearly. Okay. I and then Ralph Uwo decided to fight back. 
I'm by saying that all of those state chairmen have been suspended, the, national, the, the presidential candidate has been suspended, and what is important in all of this to understand is you cannot suspend a party member without following due process. Okay. In fact, only the word chairman where you registered in your party can actually work towards a disciplinary action that will remove you from the party as it happened with Adam the Shomole. Okay. These are things that I want us to study and understand before we open our mouth to speak about this issue. All right. I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm and I, just, right I have now. one more question I because, right because we do not have time. I have one okay. more question. One more question. Just hold on. From everything that you've said, I've held on to something because I really want to make sure that Nigerians can hear this clearly. You're telling me that your candidate picked a political party who did not do due diligence to understand that that person who sat as the national chairman had been national chairman for 17 years. You only just realized a few weeks ago. This is what you're telling Nigerians. Ahmed. Can you can you can you just let me can you just let me respond? Please. Can you let me respond, please? Yes. What I'm saying, like I said from the beginning, it is important for Nigerians to always understand what special contract they're getting into. Until this state chairman raised the issue and then we went back to the constitution, only then did we find out that the constitution does not support the contesting of the national chairman more than twice of a four-year term, which is eight years maximum. The way we did not notice it, and we thought everything was fine, that was the same way people like think the Mogalu, one year, and the rest did not know. What I think the maybe is doing right now uh, is what I expect Nigerians to applaud. Because in all honesty, if the maybe had said, okay, chairman, what do you want? I am telling you honestly, as we speak right now, nobody would hear about our situation. We would have sat down and negotiated with either APC or PDP like Ralph wants to want to do. But what he's saying is, I am going to contest, I'm going to the polls, and I do not want you or anybody to make this thing, to make us lose at the polls simply because the National Office Committee that was holding on to us had expired. I wish that we had enough time to continue having this conversation. But again, there's always an opportunity for these conversations to be had. And I'm hoping that Dumebi Kachiku can be on this show so we can talk more. But I want to say thank you to you. Uh, Ahmed Bahari is the vice presidential candidate of the ADC. And Michael Achimogu is a media consultant. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. When we get back, we'll be discussing the Labour Party and the task that is ahead of it come 2023. Stay with us.